Hi, welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal with MEM Investment Research. And today we are going to be reviewing volume as a characteristic, going over really how critical that is for you to pay attention to, particularly in conjunction with other technical indicators on your charts. So welcome. As stated, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal with MEM Investment Research. And what I'd like to do is provide a bit of background for those of you who are not familiar with my work. I am the founder of MEM Investment Research, but prior to that, I had over 25 years of experience on Wall Street. I did start out years ago as an assistant on the fixed income trading decks of Goldman Sachs, and that's how I got introduced to Wall Street. Super exciting time. From there, I did go to a large mutual firm company also in New York City, where I went on to manage over $2 billion in assets, again, in fixed income. So things really got exciting for me when I moved out to the West Coast with my then new husband. And it was there that I had the great opportunity to work with William O'Neill and company. I was a vice president there for 15 years, where I traveled the world working with top portfolio managers and analysts and really helping them uncover stocks, talk about the broader markets, and also important was really educating them on the O'Neill way of investing and uncovering these big winning stocks. For those of you not familiar, William O'Neill is the founder of Investors Business Daily. And their primary focus, again, is to get you into those outperforming, those stocks poised to outperform the broader market. So a lot of my work is centered around including that philosophy with my work. Now, more recently, I have founded my own investment research firm. And I do now still work with institutions, but I've had the opportunity to broaden that out and work with self-directed investors. And that's super exciting for me because I have the opportunity to share my many years of experience and help individuals with their investments and their investing, uh, educating them on different characteristics on ways to not only uncover these winning stocks, but more importantly, know when it's time to exit uh, as well as enter. So how to actively trade these stocks. For many, many years throughout my time, both at William O'Neill and Company and now, a lot of my work is centered around going through thousands of charts each week, always on the prowl for that next big winning stock. So I certainly do bring quite a bit of familiarity uh, not only having looked at those many charts, but also having lived through a lot of different cycles in these markets, uh, bear markets, strong uptrends, bull markets, corrections, and so forth. So I look forward to bringing all of that knowledge uh, to work for you as we go ahead and move forward here. I'm just going to take a minute. This is a disclaimer. What we're going to be doing today is viewing examples of stocks where volume has played a critical role. And in viewing these, there are not going to be any individual buy or sell recommendations. Rather, we're going to be using these charts as examples to really help fine tune your knowledge of just how important volume is in identifying stocks. So here's what we will be covering today. The first thing is I'll go ahead and review why exactly volume is so important. And then we're also going to be reviewing the five things that I've found through my many years where volume is a really significant uh, signal and the five things that this volume is telling you. And then also there are certain technical indicators, again, that I've found useful over my many years that work best in conjunction with that high volume signal that's really going to help you out. Uh, accumulation versus distribution and how you can use the characteristics of each of these to your advantage. Quite simply, accumulation is stocks that are advancing over a several day period or several week 
uh, on volume versus distribution where stocks are declining on volume. And we'll look into that as well. And then using history as a guide. Again, we are going to be reviewing charts. And a lot of that has to do, as many of you know, technical analysis is centered around the ability to identify trends. And the reason for that is because history does repeat itself again and again in the markets. I talked about a lot of my work where I'm reviewing charts weekly. A lot of my education also involved reviewing charts that go back to the beginning of the last century, for instance, when looking at Ford uh, right before the 29th collapse. And then a lot of stocks subsequent to that uh, after the end of World War II and so on again and again. You will see history does repeat itself. So the ability to identify these trends is really going to be powerful for you and in your trading. So let's go ahead and start at the very beginning. I talked to you about the concept of volume and why it's important. And quite simply, volume is uh, an increase in the number of shares that are being traded in a particular stock or potentially in the broader market. So that's really quite simply what it is. But let's review why that's important. Okay, so now we know that this volume is telling us that institutions are getting involved or either exiting a given stock. Now, why would that be so important? The reason is these institutions have a lot in the way of resources. They have analysts that have their feet on the ground. They're meeting with management. They are uncovering, they're examining the relative strength of a given company relative to its competitors and so forth. So this institutional money is generally viewed as what we call smart money. So that's one reason that you would want to pay attention to their actions. They may have an edge or an insight that you as an individual investor are not aware of, but also the institutional uh, with these large amounts of money that they need to either put to work or if they're selling, they need to raise cash. Oftentimes, it will take them a lot more than one day to execute that given trade because of how many shares that they need to either accumulate or sell. So that is another reason uh, you will oftentimes see these institutions come in and it will be the beginning of a momentous move. Uh, it may not, but it is a reason why it is really quite critical to pay attention to any kind of a pickup in volume. And then also just reviewing what exactly does high volume mean? Well, quite simply, when you're looking at a chart, we are, of course, going to be reviewing examples. You can take a look at, at the bottom, oftentimes, your chart will have a bar that is going to tell you, uh, using a scale on the right-hand side, just how much volume that is on any given day. Now, normal metrics will take into account the volume over the last 50 days, uh, some of the services that are out there. So oftentimes you can get a comparison of that given day's volume versus its average over the last 50 days. And this can be another wonderful way to stay on top of whether volume is picking up in your stock. And then once that occurs, you are going to want to marry that high volume characteristic with other indicators that could in fact uh, alert you to a potential shift in sentiment in that stock. So high volume, again, we are going to review examples. You can tell in many cases just by looking at it, but generally speaking, the average metric is uh, the average 50-day volume and the current volume relative to that. So I mentioned briefly accumulation versus distribution. We talked about shares going up on volume, uh, meaning the stock is under accumulation the opposite, of course, is shares that are over subs uh, subsequent days are going down in volume, and that means the stock is under distribution, and there are uh, many ways. We'll go ahead and get into how you can stay on top of that as well. So I also mentioned there are five things that this pickup in volume can indicate to investors. And the first thing we reviewed at length here is that the institutions are involved and how important that can be as an indication that 
uh, the shift, there's been a shift in the sentiment for that stock, either positively or negatively. And then also, this is really critical, volume can indicate that the stock is beginning an uptrend. We are going to review several examples, but then uptrend, very often you want and need to see that volume as confirmation that an uptrend is beginning. Likewise with a downtrend, if it's beginning a downtrend, the volume is going to be one of those critical uh, components of identifying the beginning. This pickup in volume as it begins either an uptrend or a downtrend is going to provide you with that confirmation. And then that confirmation in turn ideally is going to give you that confidence so that you can pull the trigger and again, these examples are going to really help you define that. Now, another thing that volume pickup can indicate to you is that an industry group is either rotating in or out of favor. As you know, the uh, S&P 500, for instance, is broken down into nine or ten sectors, depending on what uh, you use as your metrics. But these sectors and then the subgroupings beyond them, they will fall out of favor depending on where we are in the stages of a bull market uh, and other really critical factors. And the reason I'm pointing that out to you is because from my work in identifying stocks poised to outperform, one of the key factors is you want to make sure that your stock is in a stock, uh, sorry, in a sector or a subgroup that is exhibiting strength that is in an uptrend. That's really going to be the wind behind the sails for you that's going to help propel that stock higher. Uh, so the industry group rotation, it's a lot, it's a big part of my work and it really can be very powerful in helping you uh, define or refine your search for uh, stocks poised to outperform. So let's go ahead and review how you can pinpoint your entry and exit points. Again, using volume as one of your parameters. And the first way that you can is being on the lookout for stocks that gap up on volume. Oftentimes this will happen certainly during earnings season. And when that occurs, when these stocks, particularly if they have these big gaps up, oftentimes they will pull back in a, a way digesting that move, and that can be an ideal buy point on these stocks. Another way is if a stock, if it breaks out of key support on volume, I'm sorry, in this case we're talking about breaking down. And let me explain by key support. By that I mean your simple moving averages. When we look at these charts, I'll have these simple moving averages overlaid on them. And you want your stock, if it's in an uptrend, to be finding what we call support. It's not breaking below that simple moving average. However, if it does, and it does so on volume, oftentimes that is indicating much more often than not that you should exit the stock, particularly and primarily if it's on volume. And then on the positive side, if a stock breaks out of what we call a base on volume, that's a very, very significant and powerful buy point. And by base, quite simply, that is a period, for those of you that are not familiar, that's a period of consolidation in a stock where either it trends sideways, that's one form of a base, or a saucer base. But generally speaking, these basing periods are periods of what we call consolidation in your stock. And once the stock comes out of that consolidation period, does so on volume, super powerful signal. And lastly, you do want to have a system to go ahead and screen for these high volume events. And as mentioned, many platforms will provide you with an alert system if you have a list of stocks on your watch list, or more importantly, within your portfolio. But again, you do want to pay attention two high volume days because when married with other indicators it could again be providing you with significant information. So let's go ahead and get started. I talked about using examples. So what we are looking at here is a weekly price chart of 
visa. So essentially each one of these bars is giving you the high, the low, the open, and the close for that week for this particular stock. Now take a look down here at the volume and you can see how these bars, there are volume days that stand out that's as being above the normal, more normalized volume for that given stock. So again, this is weekly information. Now we are looking here at 2017 and you can see that Visa had a very significant advance well into the beginning of this year as well. And of course, as an investor, you are interested in finding out how can you capitalize or uncover this type of significant uh, move or obviously you would like to identify the stock prior to that big move and how can you do that? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Visa, this very same time period. It's a little more scrunched here because what I've done is taking that prior same chart and I've overlaid not only some technical indicators but also I've marked up the chart. We talked about consolidation periods. So let's go ahead and take this step by step. This is that very same beginning period in 2017, just as the stock began this uptrend advance. What would be we be on the lookout to help point us toward this stock? Well, ideally this stock visa would hit your screens as having been up on volume. Then in looking at the chart, you can see that the stock is coming out of that consolidation period that I talked about at base. This is a saucer type base. I do have other tutorials that get much more into this as well as a course on how to identify these consolidation periods. But more important for our work today is spotting the break out and above that and taking a look at this volume. Now that is your first sign that the stock could very well be entering into an uptrend. It's, it's a very common occurrence prior to an uptrend. Now we can move on to the other technical indicators that I've overlaid on this stock. So up here we have what's called the RSI. That is your relative strength indicator and it's a momentum oscillator. It's going to measure uh, the speed of the change of the price in a stock and the RSI is general. It's going to take uh, 14, in this case, 14 weeks. If you're looking at a daily, it's a 14 day. And it's going to take a look at the close of the stock's uh, price and over that prior 14 time period and pro uh, provide you with this oscillator. So you want to pay attention with the RSI to not only the slope as being in an uptrend, but also the position relative to this net neutral. So in this case we are getting a positive signal from this technical RSI overlay that is in line with this volume breakout. And now below the price chart I've put on here the moving average convergence divergence. It's called the MACD and this is another momentum indicator and in this case it uses uh, exponential or faster moving simple um, averages in its calculation and it's looking for convergence and divergence uh, short term versus long term. Uh, there are other ways, uh, tutorials that get more into this but for today's work I'm going to just give a brief overview that you want to look for this black line MACD coming crossing over the red signal and this is your net neutral so it's now entered into positive territory. Again, we are marrying that with this up on volume to provide us with that positive signal that Visa very much is entering into an uptrend. So that is a very good example. And I did want to mention today, I am using uh, weekly charts more actively than daily, primarily because of the recent um, the volatility over the last 10 weeks has really, uh, uh, well, it's certainly damaged some stocks, but more importantly, it creates a, a, a less readable chart, if you will. It can be distracting to have all that volatility. So the weekly chart is going to kind of smooth out a lot more of that ac action. 
but more importantly, the principles that we're reviewing today, they can be used on daily or weekly and even intraday. Everything we're discussing is going to apply to no matter what time uh, frame that you're using of your price chart. So here's another example, and here we are actually using a daily price chart. This is Amazon, and what I'm pointing out here is taking you back to uh, October 2017. The stock gaps up on earnings. Take a look at that huge volume, 14% above average. And again, we are getting confirmation. Pardon me for that. Uh, we're getting confirmation from, again, that RSI entering into positive territory, the MACD with that positive crossover. And here's another phenomenon that you'll see often when stocks have these big gaps up. They will have periods of forming yet another base, in this case back and fill, as they digest this big move. So, uh, of course, the markets, uh, again, we did have another breakout here in the beginning of 2018. A lot of these large cap growth stocks experiencing nice moves and uh, nice little pickups here in volume that are going to confirm it. Now, there is another occurrence happening over here that I wanted to point out as another way to go ahead and use this volume. And in this case, Amazon dropped with the broader markets. So you can see the stock price is undercutting recent lows here. But if you take a look at how the stock price closed on the day, uh, so here is an intraday low. And taking a look at this bar, you can see that the stock price closed in the upper portion of its trading range for the day. And that is very bullish when it occurs on volume. And you can see the subsequent uptick after that. So this is yet another way that you can use volume to tell you that buyers are coming in on the dip. And that can be very, very bullish. Again, we're marrying it with a positive RSI. So here we are looking at a monthly price chart. I'm sure a lot of uh, individual investors do not use monthly price charts. They are more standard with institutions, and that's because they are going to have a longer term horizon, um, both with current but also with their outlook. So when you're using charts, the monthly charts are going to smooth out a lot of that price action, but they can also be very telling as far as potential future movement for a longer time period. So in this case, this is Biogen, and I'm taking you back to the breakout uh, out of 2011. This was a multi-year consolidation period or base. You can see the huge pickup here on volume. And indeed, that was the beginning of a five-year uptrend in Biogen. So again, the significance of overlaying this uh, RSI to help confirm that uptrend. And then, of course, at that time in 2011, you would want it, have wanted to take a look at the biotech group because for many years, Biogen has been a bellwether. Is the group supporting this uptrend as well? So I talked about using volume to help you spot a pickup or a move in sector group strength or weakness. And in this case, we're looking at the financial sector, XLF. This is the S&P financial sector. And I'm pointing out to you here is a big pickup here in volume. This is the end of November, December 2017. You can see it, the group overall had a big move here, gaps up. This was in anticipation of the Federal Reserve's December uh, FOMC meeting where uh, there was anticipation of an uptick in interest rates. And of course, a, a rise in interest rates is generally quite positive for financial stocks. So the group went ahead and um, picked up in volume and that would be very, very uh, of a lot of interest to us because then from there, you would want to go ahead and drill down and identify potential candidates that could benefit from this move into the financials. And in our case, from our screening, we were able to identify SVB Financial Corp or group SIVB is the ticker. And here we're looking at a weekly price chart. And SIVB, you can see, uh, similar to many financial stocks, it, it sat out a good part of 
the uh, 2017 period following a big advance post-election. But in this case, SIVB broke out of this long base on big volume. It's kind of difficult to tell here, but the volume was quite big. And more importantly, it was on news. The stock came out with very good earnings. The management provided a positive outlook going forward. So this did make our uh, suggested holdings list for clients of our biweekly newsletter. Because we were able to confirm it with a positive RSI and MAC so we had a lot of converging characteristics taking place. SIVB did come out with earnings today. I believe the stock was up as much as uh, 20% on that. But again, this initial move would have gotten you into this stock with the volume characteristics. Now, equally important, I mentioned to you that you need to be able to identify when it's time to exit your stock. And what we're looking at here is Ulta beauty, ULTA. Uh, this is a weekly price chart. Now this stock was a big winner, uh, certainly among fund managers and in the markets. It was a darling. The stock was doing really quite well throughout 2015 into 2016. Now this is the correction in the beginning of 2016, but as the markets recovered, so too did Ulta Beauty. Uh, this is post uh, pre-election jitters. The markets dropped, um, but we did start to see cracks uh, in the stock here, but you can see where despite that, the stock was able to then go on to hit new highs. This is taking us into the middle part of last 2017, and what I wanted to point out to you here is the stock's break below, in this case, we have a 10 week, which is also the 50 day. And I talked about stocks once they break support, how critical that is to pay attention. So there are investors, if it breaks the 50 day, they're not gonna be as alarmed. But once a stock breaks its 200 day, for sure you need to exit the stock. Uh, my work shows historically this type of break and take a look at this huge pickup here in the volume that is foretelling of a significant decline subsequent to that. And so sure enough, you can in fact see that the stock did go on to decline quite a bit more. Now more recently, it could be trying to enter into an uptrend, but that's where you're gonna to wanna to put those technical overlays into place and pay attention to volume as well as other characteristics to to help you define that. Here's another example of that sector group movement that I mentioned to you. This is XLY, which is the S&P consumer discretionary. And this is gonna be a lot of those retail uh, stocks, consumer spending driven uh, types of stocks. So in this case, you can see that the uh, consumer discretionary group really for the most part, sat out a lot of that big 2017 move. Certainly when you compare it to other groups such as technology and much more faster moving areas. So what we're looking at here is a weekly chart of the sector, but more importantly, I wanna point out here, this breakout, this is taking us back to the end of November last year. Look at that pickup there in the volume. And this is something that caught our eye. It was in conjunction with very, very positive holiday sales reports and a lot of individual stocks started to pick up in conjunction with this. Uh, now before we exit this, I did want to also point out that same phenom as in Amazon where this is on a weekly where in line with the broader markets, uh, the consumer discretionary group broke below this 10 week or 50 day, but it did close in the upper half of its trading range for the week. Take a look at that huge volume. So in other words, institutions are in here buying on the dip. And indeed, this is a group that by and large has not suffered quite as much as other areas during this recent correction in the broader markets. Now, what I wanted to do was uh, point out to you a stock. This is another one that is on and hit our suggested holdings list for clients, and here's why. This is Estee Lauder, 
a weekly price chart. And I'm taking you back to the midpoint of 2016 and then the midpoint of 2017 was when the stock broke out of this saucer base, did so on huge volume, and it was on a release of earnings. We're able to marry that with these other technical indicators. You can see the significant uptrend that the stock has had since then, but there have been other periods where it has also again broken out of bases on very, very huge volume. These are all strong earnings reports for the stock. So you had other entry points where you could have taken advantage of the continued uptrend in this stock. So now, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the retailers. I mentioned uh, a couple of slides ago, the XLY consumer discretionary. So here's one of the names that would fit and slot into that pickup in consumer discretionaries back in the end of November, beginning of December. So this is Lululemon. So we're looking at a daily uh, chart here. And Lululemon at that time gapped up on huge volume for this stock. And uh, this was on earnings. We're able to marry that with this RSI and with the MACD. And you can see that the stock did have a move. This actual move was 7, 19%, I believe. So uh, even if you did, this was an 8% move on that day, it did go up 11% more subsequent to that. So this gap up screen can be really quite helpful, particularly if the markets are in a healthy uptrend. Uh, I'm pointing this up out up here on the RSI because I didn't mention it, but if RSI goes up above 70, it's in an overbought position. It's not something to be alarmed about. It can stay there for some length of time, but it's with an eye toward at some point anticipation that the stock will trend sideways or potentially move down. But let's move forward to a more recent period where the stock again came out with very, very strong earnings. And you can see the gap up on huge volume. Again, a nice significant advance following that gap up. But again, that pickup on volume is really what's going to put you in front of that stock. So you can see how important that can be. Um, let's take a look at another retailer, consumer discretionary. This is Macy's and it's in line with a lot of these bigger retailers that uh, had had significant multi-year downtrends uh, as sales were diminishing. Those companies that were able to go ahead and put systems in place, uh, whether it's store closures, new management, reduced pricing and so forth, they were able to come out of this downtrend. So this is one example of that. And we're looking at a weekly price chart of Macy's. And so the first signal, now you're really from our work, we wouldn't get involved in here quite yet. Uh, some of my other tutorials will tell you why. But this stock certainly would at the very least get on your radar screen because in November, this is a weekly price chart, Macy's came out with a big earnings surprise. So the stock had this big weekly move on huge volume. The volume continues to stick and stay as the stock continues to advance. Uh, it's not until we see other indicators from our work that we would have gotten into the stock, but you would have been alerted super early if you were paying attention to upticks in volume on the stock. Now again, we talked about how important it is for you to pay attention to distribution when the selling comes in. So this is Chipotle Mexican Grill. I'm going back a little bit here historically. The end of 15, many of you may be familiar with the company, did have uh, E. coli breakouts and uh, bacterial problems. So of course the markets, investors want out of the stock and they start selling. So what you want to take a look at here is breaking support. That's what we talked about. So in this case, it's breaking the 10 week or the 50 day as well as the 200 day. And you can see this pickup on volume on the way down is telling you that more distribution potentially is ahead of it. So in this case, it broke its 200 day on 153% above average volume. That was that signal that we talked about telling you it's time to exit the stock. Um, and so yeah, here we're looking at a technology stock and this is a weekly 
uh, price chart. This is another nice winning stock from our um, newsletter list. And we picked up this stock because, again, this nice pickup here on volume as the stock breaks out of a base. This was also on volume and uh, on an earnings report. And you can see the nice significant continued uptrend in this stock. Yet another example for sector rotation. I think I've mentioned to you uh, that it is important to stay on top of the group that your stock is a part of. If the group starts to fall down and come under dis distribution, other big leading stocks in that group, inevitably it will, uh, historically it will hit your stock as well. But you, So you want to be in a strong group. This is XLI, the industrial sector. So I'm taking you back here to post-election, and this is after uh, Trump's election. A lot of groups moved, of course, but this was an 11% uptick on the week. And for industrials, that's a pretty big move. It, it's something worth noting. You can see here the big pickup in volume, and it's being confirmed by the indicators. So uh, let's look at, yeah, here is a stock in that. It's Caterpillar, one of the bigger bellwether industrial stocks. So back here, we had a move on huge volume, and that was that same week that the group moved. So that should catch your eye. We have a period of, this is a weekly price chart of consolidation following that big move. But subsequent to that, we have other breakouts of consolidation on volume that could very well have gotten you in front of these other subsequently significant moves all the while. Pay att paying attention to those big volume uh, days, or in this case, weeks. We're looking at a weekly price chart. Uh, yeah, one other thing I did want to mention. So you will see uh, these big volume. Uh, sometimes the list are going to be uh, certainly on bigger volume days. The list will be more um, robust. So in this case, we're looking at CSX Rail. This is a railroad stock. I'm taking you back to last uh, mid-December 2017, and on this day, we can see that the stock dropped close to 8% on volume, and it broke that 50-day moving average. Take a look at that, 600% above average volume. But the news on that day was uh, the fact that the CEO was stepping aside because of health issues, and he had known, been known to have health issues. He did uh, resign his post. Um, now, that was significant because this uh, CEO uh, was known for having turned the company around. He was a big part of turning CSX around. His departure was met with dismay and shock. But as you'll see, the drop didn't last long. Institutions, if you look at this volume, they saw the drop as an opportunity to get in the stock at a lower price. And the reason I'm pointing that out is not all drops on volume are going to have the same significance. Uh, again, I do have other tutorials that talk about what news is going to drive stocks, what news you need to pay attention to. But all this is for you is going to become more relevant uh, over time. And uh, really important is being able to monitor the broader markets. So, of course, before getting too heavily invested, you want to make sure that the broader markets are healthy. And so what I'm doing here is looking, uh, showing you a weekly price chart. So I want to show you this correction um, back in 2016, in January. That was a tough period, of course. Markets had a significant decline. But paying attention to these volume metrics are going to be critical when combined with other. So as the price, uh, or sorry, the index drops, you can see this huge pickup in volume. That's institutions are bailing, more downside potential ahead. But what about identifying the reversal of that downtrend or the coming out of that corrective phase? Again, volume. So here during these up weeks, you are getting a nice pickup here in volume. So you're going to want to look at it relative to history. And this uptick here in volume is going to be a signal to you, again, that those institutions are coming back in, that they're believing that the worst is behind you. And then, of course, the markets go on to advance from there. Uh, so here we're looking also at the S&P. 
it is a daily price chart and this is a little more recent action so this is that um, ugly late January early February period of this year where the index broke down huge pickup on volume uh, and more importantly as it broke that 50 day that's when you really saw the significant volume telling us that more downside is going to be ahead for this stock I'm sorry for this index for the broader market CSMP and so uh, here we have what I talked about earlier is a bullish move so in this particular case we are looking at the daily it undercut that ever significant 200 day but it closed in the upper portion of the trading range huge volume and so from there we did get a bit of a uh, rally before subsequent but all the while here you are going to want to marry volume to uh, with other actions in the market to help you identify when uh, the correction when it has potentially reversed when the green lights back for you to go ahead and re-enter the markets with uh, full confidence so that uh, concludes today's webinar but there are conclusions that we can take away and number one of course is the importance of paying attention to volume this is really going to help you tr time your trading and you can see really how critical a component of this is going to be in your toolbox for trading you do want to make sure that you have a system in place whether it's alerts on your holdings on your watch list so you want to be able to pay attention to when volumes picked up and then I talk here briefly uh, know yourself so if you are devoted yes do the work it's really going to be important for you to continue to educate yourself so that you can learn how to successfully trade these markets uh, if not a newsletter such as mine where I mark up charts each week is going to be really helpful in educating you for those that may be interested in a trial offer uh, go ahead and contact me at uh, or my support team at MEM investment research and we'll go ahead and give you a link to a trial subscription for our report uh, that's going to be yet another way to really not only keep you in tuned to the market using my experience but also help educate you on what to look for oh I didn't mention this but this is a, a special offer that I would like to provide for you. And this is an audio course. It's going to teach you how to trade momentum stocks. And momentum stocks, for those of you that are not familiar, of course, are stocks that are going to move a lot faster than the markets, either up or down. This is going to help you uncover how to find the best momentum stocks. There, are, again, are going to be a lot of historical examples in here that you can use as precedents and to help guide you and uh, we it will review some of what we've gone over today but we'll go into a little bit more detail normally that is uh, 197 so today it is only nine dollars I would urge you to go ahead and take advantage of that this is a link that you can copy and paste into your browser that will get you right to a link for that offer or again you can go ahead and reach out to support and we'll give you that link directly so this concludes uh, today's webinar and I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, educate yourself familiarize yourself with our work and I look forward to seeing you again very soon Miss the live show? Want to rewatch a workshop? Tune into the Stock Charts TV YouTube channel to catch up on the latest programming and content. All of our live shows, workshops, special guests, and more can be found there. Each category has its own playlist, so it's easy to locate. We even have chart school and creative strategy videos to help you become a better technical trader. 
leave comments for our commentators, like your favorite videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.